in the trenches with Ryan Roxy. I want to talk about what's here and now, and it's Tommy's rock trip, right? If you will. I sure. will. I definitely will. Because the album uh, just came out this last week or just very, very recently. Whenever you're watching this, it just came out. It's yeah. beat up by rock and roll. Um, this was released in May 2021. Tell us where the idea to put out an album, because as we were talking before the podcast began, you're not the type of guy that wants to always be in front or wants to always be the spokesperson. Although you have a lot to say, you're very content being the foundation, the drummer, the one that holds it all down. What made you want to make this record? I mean, literally, it was because there was nothing going on in music, and I make music, you know, with this worldwide shutdown that we're all in the, the hopefully, the, the tail end of, you know, to not play music and not play with my buddies and make music, you know, it gets a little lethargic staying in these four walls. I'm in my rehearsal room right now. You can only play so much by yourself, and eventually, you got to play with other people. So I got an offer to make a record, and my own record. And I'd never made any of my own music before. I'd never had the inkling or really the yearning or, you know, I'm, I'm pretty creatively fulfilled doing what I do, playing in cool rock bands and, and being the drummer. Totally happy with that. So it never really came into play or into my, you know, I don't, I don't feel I have this, oh, I got to make my own tunes in order to be creative. I don't really have that side. It doesn't concern me. But that being said, with nothing going on, I, I kind of go, well, why not? It's the perfect opportunity. I took it as a challenge and a kind of a little experiment to myself to see if I could actually write a song, if I could actually put a band together, if I could write lyrics, if I could arrange songs, if I could record them. So, and if I could do that, would I actually like what I got on tape? And I did kind of like what I got on tape. I liked where it was going, so I continued and I made a whole record and, and here it is. I dig it. I was very happy with it. And I just wanted to make a cool little old school kind of rock and roll record for myself. And if other people dig it too, then that's just a total bonus to me. Well, so I that's, you it. It. that's it in a nudge in a nutshell. Yeah. You, you, you make music and make you want to drive your cars fast. And I, I think you, you alluded to that in a few other interviews where you say, I just want to make music that will make you want to drive fast or, you know, if you're listening to it, it makes you more excited. And I think, at the end of the day, that is the essence of rock and roll. And you talk about my team that we put together here at In the Trenches, which obviously I'm really happy about and thankful for. You put a great team to put this album together as well, starting off with you know, a guy that's very, you know, familiar to both of us. We both toured with Eric Dover in the Alice Cooper band together. He is well, there perfect you go. picture. <laughs> that says it all, right there. I'd, I'd like to see a little bit more a picture Vic might have of uh, Eric Dover's dental work. You have that? There you go. <laughs> right. That's not, that was a shot that I wanted. Right. But um, Ryan you know, has that. Ryan has that yeah. picture on a full poster blow up hanging above his bed. <laughs> well, only on the yeah. tour bus. Right. Only in the tour bus. But we. But both you and I um, played in the Alice Cooper band. Toured with Eric Dover. He's such a a great. Natural he's a nutcase. Man. He's yeah. a nutcase. He's everything. He's yeah. pure rock star. And and you got him in the band, but you also had, and I want you to give credit where credit's due to the other band members. I know there's Elliot on bass. And is that his bass right now in back of you? That's actually my no. Well, that's no, that's it's all my stuff. Well, he Everybody, borrowed all your stuff for the video, obviously. Yeah, because nobody has <laughs> stuff anymore. <laughs> You're really angry about that. You see, I, you, I am. I'm very angry about it because. It's not the same. I don't, I don't. It's not the same. It doesn't, okay, it doesn't feel the same as when you, it may sound the same going through some speakers, but it doesn't feel the same. Yeah. And when I'm playing music, it's kind of like when I say I want people to drive fast to the record, whatever that means, it may sound stupid, but I, I want, I want, when I play drums, I want people to feel tension and, and, and feel like it's gonna blow up at any minute. So I wanted to kind of capture that feel on a band. All my favorite music is like, damn, you wanna hear, it, it pumps you up and it makes you feel, it rocks. So I wanted the music to rock. Guitar know? driven, 
power driven, however you want to call it. You're, yeah. I mean, there's, obviously, there's some songs on the on the album that are uh, drum driven as well. But I'm I'm getting to the other members of the band. Why don't you introduce? Because I've already said. Eric yeah, there's Dover. a great young a great young bass player named Elliot who played awesome. He could he did exactly. He gave me exactly what I wanted. A, a great lead guitar player, Hank J. He goes by the Afro guy there. And then there was a rhythm guitar player, uh, now Nakashima, who's from Japan. And he played the rhythm guitar. And that was it. I kept it very simple. I didn't, you know, we didn't even really do any, barely any overdubs. And we recorded it in one room. We rehearsed right here, learned the songs. We didn't do any demos. And we literally went down the street to my buddy's barn and recorded in front of each other, all the amps in the same room, everything bleeding into each other. We didn't even wear headphones, no click tracks, no, old school. no cutting and pasting, nothing. We recorded it first note to the last note. And that's the truth. And I, I wanted to do it that way. And it's even more than a garage band record. That's a barn band record. It's with, it's yeah. I mean, but all my favorite records, when you read about records, well, we did the record when we didn't have a budget and we just played our live set. And I go, well, that's what I want. I want it to sound like it's our live set because that's what it would be, you mm -hmm. know? And I didn't want to do demos because when you do demos, some usually the demos turn out better than the record. There's, because, there's no such thing as demos anymore, I don't think. Yeah. I think in today's Well, no, world, I think they're... You think you so? Shoot, I think you shoot for the album right now because I think that mentality of saying, "Oh, we'll fix it, we'll get it better in the, you know, in the mix, or we'll get it better when we do it for real." Those days are kind of gone for one because there's no budgets for it, and for two, you've got the equipment right now to make it sound amazing. So just put in the performance, and I, I truly yeah. But there's a lot of this sending ideas back and forth, and you get familiar, and sometimes when you think you have too much option and too much time to think about things, you stray away from your initial idea, which is usually the best. Well, part of that's songwriting too, though. I mean, and that's what yeah. gonna, I, I was gonna say, how did, you, how did you guys write this song back and forth? Or did you come in with a bunch of ideas and say, guys, these are my ideas? Or how did those ideas go back and forth during these times? As you know, I can't play a melodic instrument. So that is a detriment. So there was a lot of, I sang all the guitar riffs and all the ideas to a guitar player. We recorded them simply and just got riff by riff by riff. And then I listened to those riffs and I put them together. And we, then we went over those again and we made them into songs over and over. It was, as, it's as grinding it out as you could, you know. And then I, you know, it just let my ears take me where I was going to go. Well, I didn't know that you couldn't play any other musical instruments besides the drums because i always assumed you had a guitar around and that you played a few chords and that's you sort of dave grolled no. it and sort of no i know not at all none of, of us none of players. that <laughs> no, none of that I but, also I, didn't... but i do know what the instrument should be playing at the time if that makes yeah. sense i know i just know so you have your you have your ideas and your visions about these songs, and it obviously worked out because the album is out right now. Um, one thing I didn't know is that you sang as much lead as you do, and you took three songs on this uh, on this album to sing lead. And yeah. I also you call saw, it that. Well, no, the new single is it the smile song that you're singing? Yeah, there's I'm, there's a one song called "Make Me Smile." That make I me sing. smile. That's 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 the newest one that that, that you're on. Now there's that's the newest video. No, not a video. I, I know it's on YouTube and it's an audio version yeah. or something. Any, anyways, it doesn't matter. I did sing three songs. Eric Dover. Well, back to Eric. Back to Eric Dover. It. What a great job he did. I mean, I couldn't have asked for more. He was so great in the studio. All I had to do was, here's the melody, which I gave him scratch vocals, and I'll get to that in a minute, and. Here's the words. And it was so effortless with him. He's such a, he just gets it very easily. And that's oh. nice to work with somebody when they get it because he's, he's talented. You know what talented I mean? As fuck. Always, uh, yeah. He's talented. And he, and he wasn't too good to not do what I wanted. You know what I mean? He's always, always humble about it. Which, no which about is, it. which is a very important thing. You, you try to give Alice what I want, what he wants. I want to give whoever I play for. You have to set yourself aside, you know? Yeah. And he did that for me because um, he probably would have naturally sang some things differently than I wanted. Um, but that being said, he, 
he is, I know he's, he can go very avant-garde, but it's great to hear him just sing straight rock because what a, he's really a rocker at heart, you know? Yeah. 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 I think. Well, the, the thing is you made his job much easier than Slash had on the first Snake Pit record, because I think he had to come in on those records and that first record, he had to come in with songs already recorded. So he had to come up with melodies and lyrics. Maybe there was a couple lyrics here and there, but he had to basically do it all. So at least you gave him a little bit to work with, you know? I gave and, him everything to work. He just had to sing. That was, yeah. you know, it's like, which I, I mean, I guess that's good and bad, but it worked out fine. But it wasn't his thing to come you up with stuff. There, there is an album version of this with all your vocals on it. No, there's not an album version. No. There, no, no, I just, I would literally sing the songs into my iPhone kind of thing. <laughs> but and, you still have those. I want to hear those. Those should be yeah, yeah, unreleased. Oh, beautiful. Somebody well, had well, well, I mean, the, there's phone. not a version of me doing scratch vocals, but. I mean, he ideas. may have them or something. There's ideas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Anyways, but the only reason I sang was because I was doing the scratch vocals for him. And there was three that actually I listened to. And I go, well, that doesn't sound that bad. And then the second thought was the one song, Make Me Smile, is about my wife. I had to sing that song. Or if Eric Boy. sang it, she would fall in love with him. <laughs> and we, I don't want that to As happen. the story would go. No, yeah. yeah. And... and, I, and <laughs> and you don't want any woman to fall in love with that mouth because they will they will leave no. you in a heartbeat. No, I think many mouths can do. Oh God! Um, <laughs> and we've seen it. Well, not that way. <laughs> and then another song is about my daughter, so I had to sing that for my daughter called "The okay. Power of Three. And then there's another song, and I just said, "Screw it, leave it. It's done." It wasn't making me puke when I heard the vocal, so I just left it. <laughs> That's all there was to it, you know. Well, that was, well, I mean, you did, that That was called, you know, Beat Up by Rock and Roll, the third song that you sang, and it's the album title. So that made sense right. as well. Well, it, you didn't have to be a great singer to sing those songs, and I proved it. <laughs> yeah. Did you have other family members on the record? I know you sang about your wife, you sang about your kid, but did you, did your father actually I don't uh, know, contribute did, to it? did he? What are you alluding to? I'm just yes. wondering. Yeah, I'm on, the, wondering. on the song, my father's a saxophone player. On the song, The Power of Three, he played a saxophone solo. I sang that song. And then my daughter has a little cameo in that song. It's the very last, last song in the album. So it's a, it's a three layers of clefetis on, three generations of clefetis on that song. So it's a gift to my dad. It's a gift to my daughter. You know, yeah. so that, that was reason enough for me to do the whole record right there. The clefetis? legacy and that's what you call yeah. serving up a softball to you see it yeah. hit it out of the park right. now now you just won the hearts and minds of all of everybody that's in the uh, chat because they said well oh, if, I'm gonna go check if, it out. if somebody hears this song they're gonna say what a good dad i guarantee it and is that the power of three you your father and your daughter no it's me my wife and my daughters that's the power of three my yeah. wife is a wonderful singer she's just too damn shy to do so you, anything so she's oh. she's no use to me in that in that arena <laughs> does she ever uh jam in the rehearsal room that you're in right she now? she will like she'll she's has a beautiful voice i'm not even joking i can't believe it and she'll come in here she'll ask me to turn on the mic but you can't come in here she she'll like do it for an hour by herself or go upstairs but it's a rarity but if you walk in she like she clamps up so whatever oh. Beat Up by Rock and Roll, the new album from Tommy's Rock Trip. I like it. I like that you made it, you made it a name. You know, you got your name in there, but you still didn't make it a solo project. Well, I, it reminds me, hearkening of Roxy 77 a little bit. I don't want to say it's a nod to Roxy 77, but I, good on you for doing that. I don't want to say it's a nod to Roxy 77 either. <laughs> Nobody wants to. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I have it. a horrible last name. <laughs> for an album and I didn't I don't really consider it a solo album it's just a rock record with some good musicians on it you know I mean, it just you're sounds so up. you're serving me up softballs because when you talk about your last name Vic are you ready to run that clip again how good I've been at getting your name right Mr. Tommy Clefettis and that's well, what we're I mean, with right now on the uh, on the drums Tommy yeah. Clefettis yeah this is the way I used to say it Vic uh, Tommy Clefettis <laughs> 
big, big... Uh, Clefetis, by the way. For the last eight years, <laughs> Clefetos. Clefetis. <laughs> Clefetis. Dude, I'm just going with what Ozzy says on stage, okay? Does he say it right? Yeah, does he say he it right? He can say whatever he wants. <laughs> exactly. In Clefetos. 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 Clefetis. Clefetis. Clefetos. Come on, Roxovich. Come on, Roxovich. That's the last thing yeah. he's... Yeah. Anyway. That's your last name, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's just an abbreviation of a Polish name, and yeah, you know, you yeah. know the story. Just, just no, go check out my It is here. what it is. I mean, you you can't even come up with a stage name for Clefetis. It doesn't work. <laughs> People have been doing it for years, though, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, they just know you as Tommy, the powerhouse drummer, and the one that okay. they, they plays with pretty much the biggest rock stars i don't um, care if people there. know me i just want to be i just want to do my gigs and go home you know yeah you've kind of always had that like yeah. i said you, I, i've and, and you know this you know when i said head hunting you know you've been head hunted to a lot of bands chuck and i actually kind of head hunted you from ted nugent because the minute i saw you play i was like i brought chuck <laughs> and i said who's that guy because if, if we ever need a drummer and the you know the usual suspects uh can't do it tommy's our guy and chuck goes i believe you know 100 percent. and then then we went on to play with alice and we went on to play and then you went on to play with rob and ozzy and black sabbath and all the way up till right now so um i don't know that was a little bit of hyping up the new album that's good, but I appreciate you... it. Yeah. I'm Ryan Roxy, and I've taken all my years of experience of playing guitar, and I want to pass the torch of rock and roll on to you. Check out the System 12 Guitar Method.